do remember listening to a lot of recordings when I was young. And talagang when I heard the violin, talagang it really moved me. Yeah, I think I was attracted to, to the violin even before I started taking the lessons. Yeah, so I come from a very artistic family. My grandfather, Ramon Corpus, was the first violinist who went abroad to study in 1911, I think at the, at the turn of World War I. So music and arts have always been part of our family. We took easily to the instruments. I think because all of us, my grandfather played and all of my cousins played, but we all had a natural ability for it. I won the Namsia in November. I left for Juilliard the following June for entrance in September of 1978. Julian was quite a challenge for me. I, I came from the Philippine Youth Orchestra. There were just a handful of kids my age who were really good. But you got there, it was just like a mall of prodigies. There were like four floors of people playing incredibly well. In 1990, I think I believe it was, I was chosen by a Philippine artist to serve a residency in Kansas City. Dodge City, Kansas, you know, the world of white herb and cowboys. And that was the project of the National Endowment for the Arts. They were trying to bring culture to the rural areas of America. So I lived in Dodge City for about two years, doing a residency, doing community work. I was doing lectures for the schools, developing programs for the public schools. So it was then, 1991, when my second year, instead of renewing, I told my parents, Siguro, I'd like to come home and do what I was doing there, rather than do community work for America, do something for my own country. So 1996, I started teaching under a tree. Wala pa kami mga classrooms eh. Just under that big tree in front of the building. I started a workshop for 12 kids. And my sister naman for 10 visual artists. So that's how the school actually began. It was under a tree, no infrastructure. And then, yeah, from 12, we we're, were almost 100. Actually, it's summer, we're more than 100 kids. I met my first batch of students in a procession. Because you know, our family is the sponsor of the local, the big procession every, the big fiesta every year. So just walking in the procession, I met a few kids who had come here for workshops and said, "Ay, gusto namin ano, meron pa bang nangyari sa casa? Pwede ba kami ano, pumunta? And that's how I picked my first batch of 12 students. But from then, you know, after about two years, medyo dumami yung kids. So I started teaching the kids how to teach and they started to teach their own mentees. So, it's a double effect now. And that's the same system that we use now, which we call Play It Forward. So now, I teach 12. Each of the 12 teach six. And then, of the six, I think two of them teach another two more. So we're able to maintain a, a school without actually any, any money. Six years old po ako nung... Wala pong audition na, pero ano po, open po kasi yung kasa na magturo po ng mga bata. So, nag-enroll po ako, nag-try po ako. Nahihirapan po ako nung simula, pero nung tumagal na po, nagustuhan ko na po yung pagtutugtog ng violin. Tapos, yun nga po, nagpalit na po ako ng viola. Kasi po kulang po yung violist dito sa kasa. Apo, stricto po si Sir Cook. Tapos, wala biro na natutunan ko po sa kanya yung maging confident lagi kapag tutugtog. Tapos mag-perform po na may puso. Tapos kapag tumutugtog ka, tumugtog ka na parang nag-perform ka lagi. Huwag mong isipin na pag nag-perform ka, parang wala lang, ialay mo yung music mo kung kanino man. This opened in 1996. In 2000, there was a question whether to go on. I mean, the whole concept was actually under question by the board because it was not making any money. So the question is, why do it? And we interviewed the parents and the kids, and we found out that most of them really testified that the being at Casa meant so much to them that they would not be the people that they were had it not been for Casa. So parang dun, dun tumunog yung, ah, so this has a value beyond music. It's really about self-esteem, about confidence, about defining themselves who they are. So from then, parang naging aming ano, reason for being that we are here you know, to, to, to give the kids a chance to discover who they are. It's like school, no? it's, it's about defining who you are, having experiences, um, overcoming difficulties, and, and making music together. Ang nagustuhan ko po nun, kasi po yung music po para sa akin, yun po yung naging comfort ko. Tapos yung music po yung naging way para i-express ko po yung emotions na hindi ko kayang i-express sa by words. Yung time po na tuwing malungkot po ako, kaya masaya. Yung music po yung nagiging katabi ko lagi. I think part of the demographic or the, the profile of the kids who come here are mostly kids who are really smart. So parang here, they're able to be with other smart kids who have similar interests. So in a way, it's also a social subculture of people who, who have similar tastes 
and similar passion. So when they make music together, it's really, for me, that's my satisfaction. Well, we, this is our 25th year. This is our silver year, so we're still here. <laughs> Although I love performing, there was something about education that really struck me, because eh, it's more long-term, and the engagement is really very personal. I'm more convinced that it's very important. A lot of what we do here has helped them cope with difficulties in their own lives. Parang ito yung kanilang moral backbone, so to speak, no? Parang music becomes something that you can rely on when you're having a hard time, whether it's pressure from school, pressure from parents, personal problems. Parang music is really your backbone. I think that's very important for them to have that to fall back on. Because what you learn in music goes beyond music, eh? It enters your life, the way you make decisions, the way you think, your values. So, yung naging effect ko sa akin. Kasi po nung pumasok po ako ng kasa, yung parang music na po kasi yung lagi kong sandigan kapag may problema, kapag masaya, malungkot. Parang hindi ko po alam kung anong patutunguhan ko pag walang music. I can't quit. I'm at the point of no return because naumpisahan na eh, and it's grown. I can't imagine abandoning it anytime. I think what worries me the most is being able to pass it on to another, somehow make it go on beyond my time. Diba? That sense that it can go on kahit wala ako. All of them move on eventually. So I can only hope that somehow the music will always be with them. And I think it will be. It will always be part of their lives. Yeah.